Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus, under the law, chapter 11. And the Lord spake unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the church age people, saying, No, it's not what it says. Only if you're going to be a seven day of somebody, and you're going to put yourself back under the law. But speak unto the children of Israel. So anybody who honors that Sabbath day today, you Israel, you sure stealing from Israel. These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. See, we've got a problem with dietary today. We've always had a problem with dietary. Oh, you can't eat meat. You must eat herbs and vegetation, veggies, and all that other stuff. Man was never made to eat meat. And then if you're allowed to eat meat, well, there are certain meats you can't eat. And we've had the trouble of our lives of sin since a fruit. God said, thou shalt not eat, least you, that you'll die. About surely die. And the day that Eve took a bite and then Adam took a bite, being there with his wife, we got a problem with eating. We got a problem with diet. We got a problem with weight. We got a problem with diabetes. We got all kinds of problems. We get sick from some of the foods we eat. Yet food is important. Food is, first of all, we need air. We die quicker if we don't have enough air going into our lungs and out. And then next after that, water. We can live longer without food, but we cannot live long without water when it comes to life. And then third, food. You can survive without food if you got air and you got water. And eventually you don't have food, then you'll die. But we're looking at Israel. We're not looking at the church. We're not under the Sabbath. We're not under the law. We're not under Sabbath Saturday service. And I went to a hospital. We've been so you know you can't order bacon, can't order because it's a violation of the law for you to have that. I'm not under the law. I'm a Christian. I'm offended. Where's my bacon? And it's funny for a hospital like that, Sunday you got people working. I mean, Saturday you got people working. See, I say Sunday because I'm a Christian. Saturday you got people working at hospital, but they're not working. And yet you haven't read the law because the law said on the Sabbath day, thy maid servants, thy man servants, thy female servants. Yeah. So don't not say, oh, I can't give you bacon. And then have everybody of your servants working and then say, oh, we're, we're Aventus. And there's a church around here. They have Bible study. Yeah, okay, let's get into the Bible. I've got certain passages we can talk about as a Bible study, which I guarantee you miss, like a church that has a Christmas tree at the altar, and we'll just skip Jeremiah chapter 10. Amen. Why can't we do the whole Bible? So it says the children of Israel, saying, you gotta, and when you read this, you really got to think about Peter when he had that sheet of all those four-legged animals come down in Acts chapter 10. Because this is what shows up in Peter. Rise up and eat. Peter's like, uh-uh, I'm under the law. And God's like, uh-uh, don't you dare call anything unclean. Because I'm going to send you to a man, and in his kitchen, he's going to be cooking things that I say not before under the law you're not to have now we're not under the law and paul says if you can thank god for the for what we're going about to read right now that you couldn't eat then that you can say lord god thank you god i'm saved under the blood of jesus christ and i can sit down and have a fork 
Thank you, Lord. Acts chapter 10 with Peter. I, forget, I think it's Corinthians he mentions about the Thanksgiving. But listen to me. Listen to me. If I were to sit down with a, with a Jewish person, and I have a soul for him to, to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved, I will not order anything that's in this chapter, chapter 11, under grace, that I may not offend him. Now, I don't know if I'll get a chance to witness to him about Jesus some way or form, but if I sat down with a Jewish person today and ordered a lobster, that will offend him. If he has anything to the five books of Moses. I would ask him, say, sir, the Bible says that you're not allowed to have certain things. Would it be okay if I order ribs? Not okay? Okay, then I say, is chicken okay by your diet? Okay, I will. As the fact is that I can be a Christian character to someone to witness to him. I say, okay, I'll follow Leviticus 11. In the sake that Paul says that we don't offend anybody. I'm not under the law, but I'm just trying to be proper to gain someone to Jesus. So whosoever, oh, wait a minute, speak on the children of Israel. I haven't got that done yet. I am not up well, with my family history. I probably have some Jew in me, but most Gentiles do not have any blood of Jews in them. These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. This came about when, when Noah came out of that ark. He says, every clean beast you shall take up sevens. Why? Because you're going to be able to put them on a grill and offer them to me for sacrifice, Noah. And you can put them on the grill and put them between a bun and eat it. Because you're not over and under that vegetarian diet no more. I'm going to allow you to eat animals. And is it funny that here we are in Leviticus 11. We're going to talk about clean and unclean animals. But God told Noah when he's preparing that ark. You're going to buy clean animals. Bring seven. There is no law. There is no Leviticus 11. And Moses gets this on Mount Sinai. Exodus 20. That God's writing to him this. But God had already told man. Told Noah. These are the clean and unclean. So what you find unclean in Leviticus 11, there were only two pigs on that ark, a male and a female. But beef, there was male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female, male, I forget how many I got there. Seven pairs. Lambs, I'm sheep, seven pairs. Seven rams, seven, seven pairs of those animals. How do you know they're clean? Because God says, offer them to me. Put them up before me. Whatsoever parteth the hoof, this is now their feet, of all things that characterize an animal, its feet, and its cloven footed, we'll get to that in a minute, and cheweth the cud, cud among the beasts, that shall he eat. So his feet have to be parted, and he has to chew the cud. He's clean. There we go. We'll look at it. Nevertheless, but these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud. Of them that divide the hoof as the camel. Why can't I eat the camel? Because he cheweth the cud. Hey, you said he could chew the cud. But divideth not the hoof. He's unclean unto you. So pick up a camel's foot and look at the bottom and say, Oh, God don't approve of that. Something wrong with that foot. You do remember Genesis 3.13 about the foot? Let's go back to Genesis 3.15. Feet. Are a remarkable thing in the Bible. Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15. I will put enmity between thee, the snake, and the woman. You know, it is, a, it is against the Bible for a woman to hold a snake. I say that because we went to the Saint Sanitarium the other day. And women. The Bible says I put hatred between the woman and the snake. That's enough. And between thy seed, the, the devil's seed, and her seed, Jesus Christ, it shall bruise thy head. Satan will, uh, Jesus will bruise Satan's head. I'm going to go out. And thou, Satan, shall bruise his heel, his feet. You do know that the uh, cherubims have feet that look like oxen or cows. The hoof. You look at the, the description of the beast. I don't mean the beast. I'm talking about the beast before God. Holy, holy, holy. 
Ezekiel tells they have calves feet to split hoof. So camels you can't eat. And the coning, it's like a rabbit. And please, please, Lord God, do not look into commentaries. Do not look into Bible dictionary. You are going to go far along weird on this coning. He's like a rabbit. They got all kinds of things about that. Because he cheweth the cud, but denieth, but divideth not the hoof. He's got a paw. He's unclean unto you. The hare, that's a rabbit. And I got a note here, I'm not even going to read it to you, because we know what a hare is. Because he cheweth the cud, but deny but divideth not the hoof. He's got a paw. <coughs> He's unclean unto you. We're going to have fun with this chapter. Some of you are going to come out of this chapter praising God. You're saving under the blood in a few verses. And the swine, pig, pork, the other white meat. Though he divide the hoof. So look at a pig's foot. And God says, I like that. I approve of that. And be cloven-footed. So you want to know what cloven-footed is? What we just read and now here? Go online. you got the internet. Look, look up. Put pig's foot, or go to do the the uh, the, the baker uh, the bakery, the butcher the meat department. You'll find places where you got the pig's feet, and say, oh okay, that's a cloven foot. Yet he cheweth not the cud. Oh, he is unclean to you. So we got animals they chew the cud, but their feet are not right. They're unclean. We got an animal here. He cheweth the cud. I mean, wait a minute. He, he's got the right foot, but he doesn't chew the cud, so he's unclean. So pork and everything, sausage and bacon, no, no for Jewish people. And you know when Peter's going to go into an Italian's house, you know you're going to smell that sausage, spaghetti. So when Peter sees that sheep coming down, can you just imagine what animals God chose for that sheep? And Peter said, no, 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 not so. I have not touched anything. Oh, look at Peter quote in verse, we'll take verse 7. Unclean. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Let's make sure we're getting the scriptures correct here. Because I don't want you to have to think that I'm just talking. And let's see what the Bible says. Acts chapter 10, what Peter says. we got to see what the Bible says. I'm getting, I'm getting involved with a lot of churches and just speaking nonsense today, you know. Jonah didn't die and go to hell and stuff like that. Oh, Acts chapter 10, let's, 9. And on the morrow, tomorrow, as they went on their journeys and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the house top, click, click, oh, say, no, sorry, to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry. Ooh, isn't that a contest? And would have eaten. Look at the context the Holy Spirit is telling us. The Holy Spirit is saying, go over to chapter 11 of Leviticus and see something change. But while they made ready, they're, they're cooking down in the house. And Peter's up the house top. He's going to pray. He fell into a trance. And saw the heaven open. Well, Moses was there in heaven with God. And a certain vessel, we don't know what it is, descended upon him. Maybe a grill, I don't know. As it had been a great sheet. That's interesting, sheet. Knit at the four corners. I wonder if you can go back to the tabernacle, I don't know. And let down to the earth. So here comes this sheet, it's coming down to the ground. Wherein were all manner of four footed. Why does it say feet? Why does it point out feet? What's Leviticus point out? Feet. Isn't that interesting? Isn't the Holy Spirit great? Let's see. 1490 B.C. and 38 B.C. Approximately 1500 years later, Holy Spirit says, I know what I said. Write it down, Luke. Luke, Luke, Luke wrote Acts. So, four feet of beast. Of the, beast uh, these are the beasts that you shall eat. You see the Holy Spirit working? We're not taking nothing out of context here. Nothing. These are the beasts which ye shall eat among the beasts of the earth. Four feet of beasts of the earth. Just look over here. 
Oh, oh look, look, look. Limit 11 2. Speak in the children of Israel. These are the beasts which you shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Leviticus 11 and Acts chapter 10. They are together. Isn't that great? Here we go. I'm going to finish this one. And wild beasts. Disease. And creepy things. We'll get to them in a minute. And the falls of the air. They're all in Leviticus 11. God is going to show Peter everything that is unclean in this vessel. That is found in chapter 11 Leviticus. And there came a voice in him saying, Rise, Peter, eat and kill and eat. So they're alive. I want you to kill them. I want you to eat them. Peter you know how Peter is, but Peter said, Not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Well, let's take four. And the swine, though, the, though it divideth the hoof, and be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud. He is unclean to you. Leviticus 11 and Acts chapter 10, they're just one in the one. You cannot not say you don't see it and that common run that to we won't go there but run that to Ezekiel 414 the common so and that's my place and the voice spake unto him again the second time what God has cleansed thou call not thou common this was done thrice and the vessel received up again into heaven and Peter downed himself, and the, the visitors of uh, Cornelius come, and he ends up going to a Gentile's house, which is illegal, long, oh, no, he's in there smelling, oh, wow, oh, what is that smell? Here, Peter, have something to eat. Okay, Lord, now I know what you meant. And he probably said, mm -mm, good, praise God, I'm not under that law no more. Because you find him later on, he's having a Gentile meal, and then the Jews show up, and he gets up and takes off. I forget, it was Apollo's lesson, and Paul goes up to Peter and says, Peter, you're a bad boy. That's put in the Bible in my sense. Later on, Peter's found sitting and eating with these people. He liked the food. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass, if they die, shall not touch. They are unclean to you. So you know, he thought the dead body of him. So what was the Jewish prodigal son doing with a bunch of swine? Oh, if I could eat their food with them. Get that? The prodigal son was where he was not supposed to be in an unclean environment, and the father still took him back. Oh, for the sake of my wife, I should just skip 9 through 12 oh. because it just erased that out of her body. Genesis 8. 8. Genesis 8. 17. 17. For with thee, every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and cattle and every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly upon the earth and be fruitful and multiply, and every beast. <laughs> Every beast that creepeth, in verse 19, every beast that creepeth, and creepy thing, and fowl, and that was ever creepeth upon the earth, that may come forth by the spot, because this could be meat for you. Yeah, he does, he does tell him, he said, it should be meat for you. And men became a, a meat They'll say, your teeth are vegetarian teeth. That's 100% true. But then God allowed Noah. But he told the Jews, you have a restricted diet because you are to be particular people. How do you know that guy's a Jew? He won't eat our, from our menu. These things shall ye eat of all that are in the waters. Whatsoever has fins and scales in the waters, in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye. So the dietary law of seafood is it's got to have fins and it's got to have scales. And all that have no fins and scales in the seas, in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, God's like, anything that has water. And of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be abomination unto you, the Jews. Abomination. Shellfish, 
lobsters, crabs, shrimp, are a abomination to the Jewish person under the law. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their car yeah, ye shall have their carcasses in an abomination, even the dead. It said unclean for the pork, but for the seafood, it's an abomination. Whatsoever has no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be abomination unto you. Well, look at that. A Jew is not saved if he's eating seafood. So a Jew cannot be in a pig market. Pork bellies. Remember the pigs said, the, the legion said, can we go into them? And they all committed hogicide. Well, the places that swine show up. Okay, now, and these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls, the birds. They shall not be eaten, for they are an abomination. Ready? The national symbol of Germany and America, the eagle. That's an abomination to God. We're a Christian nation, one nation under God. God bless America. And the symbol bird that you choose is an abomination of God. Well, we're not under the law, you said. Are we worshiping Jehovah, God, Jesus Christ, the Son upon Calvary? Are we putting our knees as a nation down to Jesus Christ? Well, no. Then you're under the law, under the nation. These are abomination. The ego, the offerage, I don't know, an osprey, and the vulture. You ever seen what vultures eat? Right? I wouldn't even think about eating a vulture. I can't think about what he eats. And the kite. Now, that's a bird. That's not that little thing that you fly in the sky. After his kind. Ooh, we went back to Genesis 1. Every raven. After his kind. Back to Genesis 1. They're not evolving. And the owl. And the night hawk. And the cock I don't know what he is. And the hawk after his kind. The little owl. Can't leave him out. The cormorant. And the great owl. And the swan. And the pelican. And the gyre eagle. And the stork. And the heron. After her kind. And the lapwing. And the bat. That's a mammal. According to the man, God says that's a fall. We got a problem with bats and whales between man and science and the Bible. God says a whale is a fish, and God says a bat is a bird. But man says the whale is a mammal and the bat is a mammal. God's messing with you. I love it. All the falls that creep. I don't know what kind of falls creep. Going upon all fours. Have you ever seen a fall that have four? Like, they must have died out. Yeah, I've never seen one. They must be extinct. I've never. Now, I would love to have a chicken have. I'd love to take a chicken breed in with a milli feed and get a, a million chicken legs, but yeah. I've never seen a fall with four legs. Shall be an abomination to you. Do you know that this. Leviticus 11, may I say, you ready? You ready? You ready? You ready to put yourself under the law? You ready to, to do what the law tells you to do? You realize when the church is gone, the, the law is back, you cannot eat any of this. So if you go in the restaurant, besides receiving the mark of the beef, and you sit down and have a seafood meal at a seafood restaurant and eat that, you are in abomination under the law. And that would be for Gentiles because Gentiles will be under the law in the tribulation period. Don't go into your restaurant and order pork in the tribulation. Let me say that. Not the church age. In the tribulation period. When it's under the law. If you take part of this, you're an abomination. We're not going to do that. We, some people, I'm saying, some people put the church in the tribulation. Not me. I'm going. 
Revelation 4, I'm in heaven with the beast. With the beast. Get it? With the beast, the eagle, the calf, the man, and the lion. Remember that? That's where I am. But, in the tribulation period, what we're reading right now from G Gentiles and Jewish people, it's an abomination to God. I'd love to see that fall with the four legs. Love to have one of them under under grace. Yet these may ye eat of every flying creepy thing that goeth upon the all four. Okay, you can eat these that have all four, which have legs above their feet, to leap with all upon the earth. Now here we go. Ready? Even these of them you may eat. The locust. Did you know locust is a fall? And he's got four legs. And John the Baptist comes chewing on locusts. Did you know that? Flying creepy thing. After his kind. So you can eat locusts. And some people do. Okay. We read over here the eagle is unclean. But we got the bald locust. So why can't we have the bald locust as our symbol? Of, of, no. After his kind. You said make it fun of America. No. And the beetle. You can eat beetles after their kind, after his kind. And the grasshopper after his kind. So you can't say the beetles, the singing group, are clean and all that because it says after his kind it means a beetle that makes a beetle. Not no singing group. But all other flying creepy things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. I don't know if butterflies have four feet, but they're abomination and for these ye shall be unclean whosoever touches a carcass the dead body of them shall be unclean until the evening 6 p.m. you come across one of these animals that they're unclean and you touch it because it's dead you're unclean you're going to have to wash to 6 p.m. and whosoever beareth all the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean so if there's a dead animal in the street and you go have to move it you're unclean this even you got to wash your so I would too and the carcasses of every beast which divideth the who and is not cloven footed nor chew the cub are unclean unto you everyone that touches them shall be unclean that is the prodigal son in the gospel of Luke that boy is unclean but the father took him back and whatsoever goes upon his paws cats and dogs are unclean now if they're unclean in Leviticus what do you think it, 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 they're gonna end up in heaven really you haven't read your Bible Monkeys, like that. yep above uh, among all manner of beasts that go on all four those are unclean unto you whosoever touches their carcass shall be unclean unto the even that's dog or cat so if you if a Jew and they had dogs running around because they were scavengers scavengers cats lions I believe they have paws and he that bears the carcass of them shall wash his clothes and be unclean unto the even and they are unclean unto you now here we go some more fun stuff these also shall be unclean unto you among the creepy things, creeping things that creep upon the earth. The weasel. Pop goes the weasel. And the mouse. The mouse that caused the rats that caused the black plague of God. And the tortoise. After his kind. The so tortoises are unclean to you. And the ferret. How many have the Jewish people have a ferret as a parrot as a parrot as a <laughs> pet the chameleon and the lizard and the snail and the mole Do you realize a man who's Jewish cannot have a pet store by the law look at all these animals you see in a pet store these are unclean to you among all that creep creeps whosoever does touch them Touch them when they be dead. So you set a mouse trap to catch that mouse. You're in trouble. I, it doesn't say anything. Like, 
if you can use a stick or shovel. There's nothing in there, but it says if you touch him. But that we're going to see later on. The, the example of the mouse trap. There's been a dead mouse. You pick it up again to, to make it for another time. You touched. But it's interesting. I don't see anything like, could you use a shovel for a dead animal? So, touch them. When they are dead, shall be unclean unto the evening. And upon whatsoever any of them, then clean them. When they are dead, does fall, it shall be unclean. Whether it be in any vessel of wood. So, there's your wooden handle. So, I don't know if, if you could use a broomstick. Yeah, a broomstick isn't a vessel. Vessels hold things. Like a bowl or a pot or a barrel. Or a raiment. That's your clothes. If I open up your trunk, you find a dead an animal in it. Or skin. That's hides. Or sack. You open up a sack and there's a dead, unclean animal. Whatsoever vessel it be, whether any work is done... It must be put into water. You have to wash it. And it shall be unclean unto the even. So it shall be cleansed. So let's say you open up your luggage. You're on the trip. And there's a dead unclean animal in it. Well you can't leave to after. Well you can't leave after 6 p.m. Because that's the Sabbath. So you got to wait till the next day. After you wash whatever it was. You got your favorite dress. And boom there's a dead animal. Well you got to clean it. And then you got to wait till the next day to wear it. So, and every earthen vessel, pottery, whereunto any of them falleth, whatsoever, whatsoever is in it, shall be unclean, and you shall break it. Because earthen, we saw with the blood before too, it soaks in. So, of all meat which may be eaten, that on which such water cometh shall be unclean, and all drink that may be drunk in every such vessel shall be unclean. So that dead animal falls in something that's got drinking, wine, water, whatever. He's infested that drink and you got to pour it out. And this is sanitary too because it, it prevents disease. Had Europe read Leviticus chapter 11 and read where you're supposed to wash your hands after surgery, that black plague would never have gone through. And doctors were taking care of, of patients infected with the with the lice and all that and carrying it over to the next patient. And everything whereupon any part of their carcass falleth shall be unclean, whether it be oven or ranges or pots, they shall be broken down. That's a lot of work. But they are unclean and shall be unclean unto you. Broken down and taken rid of and go get a new one. Nevertheless, whew, a fountain or pit where there is plenty of water shall be clean. So an animal drops dead in, in, a, in a river, flowing water. It's, it's okay. But that which touches their carcass shall be unclean. You got to take that animal out of water. You're unclean. And don't think just because you, it, you know, it's it, I touched water. I'm, you know, you go in the bathroom, you put your hands just under the water. Okay, I'm clean. No, you got to wash. And we seen that the other night. You got bacteria when you don't wash. You got bacteria when you, okay, I'm done. Only time you didn't have bacteria is when you go in there and then you take the soap and you wash yourselves. It wasn't up to the Civil War to doctors and those in the medical field realize that. It's a shame that people won't get in the Bible, will they? And if any part of the carcass fall upon any sowing seed. Now this is a type of sin. And sowing seed, Mark 4, 14, the word of God. Which is to be sown, it shall be clean. So nothing unclean, when you throw it out, if it lands on people... Who are in darkness or going to die and go to hell. It does not make that seed unclean. As a matter of fact, it can produce something. But, this is interesting. If any water be put upon the seed, 
and any part of that carcass fall thereon, it shall be unclean unto you. So the seed's been sown and it's been watered. Then if that dead body falls on it. Because the water carries the diseases of that animal and spreads it out to the other seeds. And if any beast of which ye may eat, right, the clean beast, die. He that touches the carcass thereof shall be unclean unto the even. Even if it's a clean beast, if it dies, you're unclean until 6 p.m. He that eateth of the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean unto the even. He also that beareth the carcass of it shall wash his clothes and be unclean unto the even. Butchers would fall into this category. They're clean animals. They're chopping them up. They're dead, but you can't. At the end of the day, you got to be clean. And every creepy thing. I love that. I love it about creepy thing. That creepeth upon the earth shall be an abomination. It shall not be eaten. Whatsoever goeth upon the belly. Ooh, here's your snakes. But we left out snakes, didn't you? God puts a special class for snakes. And whatsoever goeth upon all four. But whatsoever has more feet among all the creepy things that creep upon the earth. Millipede. Centipede. Then you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Look that word up. You shall not make yourself abominable with any creepy thing that creepeth. Neither shall ye make yourselves unclean with them, that ye should be defiled thereby. And you will find in the prophets that they were eating mice. And they were eating pork. I forget which prophet talks about. But look up mice in a concordance. And I believe you also will find where it talks about uh, the pork they were eating. Well, that was the Philistines that made them because of the Ark of God. Because God gave them in the and secret mice. places. And mice were running around their land like they were running around in Europe. Exactly. Well, at least the Philistines had enough sense to say, hey, God did this. Now we'll just make images of them. And then they made images of that. Oh, never mind. That's another subject. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. If only Christians got that. Neither shall ye devour yourself with any manner of creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. Creeps. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. Look at that memory. I guess Egypt was doing things with creepy things and all that they shouldn't have been doing. Ye shall therefore be holy for I am. You see what God is doing. He's setting this nation apart from all nations. Peter. Rise up and eat. Oh not so Lord. I don't eat anything that's clean, unclean or common. No, no, don't you call those Gentiles unclean or clean anymore. Because if they believe on my son Jesus Christ. They're just as safe as you are. Whether Greek or Jew or Jew or Greek. They're mine. How's that? This is the law of the beast. I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. And the fall. And every and every living creature that moveth in the waters. And the, every creep. Yeah, I can't get it right. Every creature that creepeth upon the earth. I'm having too much fun. My mouth is run away with my brain. To make a difference between the clean, unclean, and clean. So God is saying, listen, Jew. Listen, people. I want you separate from those all people of the world. I want people to look at you and say, you are weird. You don't do what we do. Now let's get to You don't do what we do. You don't act like we act. You do not dress like we dress. You do not do the things we do. And yet the church today has gone away from that and gone the ways of the world. You can find bounce houses at a city hall carnival event, and you can find them in the churchyards too. You can find Christmas trees in the heathen home, and you can find them in churches too. You can find Easter hunts in both places. You look at today's church and you say, well, there's no difference. You're not a child of God. 
And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. And God, and some people say, well, some of these animals in the desert region, you know, and get off that junk and that crap, will you? Because God's saying, I want you to protect with people. I want you to stand out of all people. And then they say, excuse me, sir, I understand you don't do this and we do this. Why don't you do this? For God Almighty, Jehovah, the Lord, he has set forth for us a writing of the Bible or the word of God. We're not to do it. We're obeying him. He said, where do you get that from? Jeremiah, God says, I want you called the Rechabites. And I want you to sit full of pots of wine. And I want you to tell the Rechabites, I want you to drink that wine and go ahead and get drunk. And Jeremiah calls them up. He said, here's these parts of wine. He says, go ahead and drink. And he said, we're not going to drink. Jeremiah says, well, wait a minute. What? God told you to drink it. Drink it. Listen, our father told us we're not to do that. We're not to have a permanent home. We're to be nomads. We're to go about. We're to do this and do that. According to our father, small F. And God said, only my people would follow the big F father and do what I told them. And because the Rechabites will do what their father, small F, I am going to give them a name that they're stew around today. It's called a classification that you are of God and not of Satan. And Christians won't get that. We don't want to be putting our, our trust in God and not guns. I know they both begin with a G, but one's a small G and one's a big G. We ought to dress totally different. And the fact is, when you are in a public ministry, God says the world looks at that, it's foolish. And God said, yeah, go ahead and be foolish. Because the world doesn't want to be foolish. They don't think they're foolish. Yeah, go ahead and be foolish, but the power of the gospel that you preach, that's not foolishness. What you're doing, Jews, you're not doing anything foolish. You're obeying me. Now, the Gentiles may think you're foolish. Man, if you can only do this, if you can only eat this. And they think, no, no, you're obeying me. You're obeying what I told you to do, and I'm pleased with that. That's what it comes down to. What, what did God say? And we run back to Genesis 2. We run back to Genesis 3. We got the same problem. Adam, thou shalt not eat of that fruit of the good the tree of good and of knowledge of evil, of good and evil. And he blew it. Eve and Adam ate that fruit. God said, okay, Jews, you're going to do everything I tell you to do? Here's a whole list of things not to eat. What are you going to do? How's that? One thing the man will, will disregard God is something that goes through his belly. 